My name is Captain Ryan Harrington, owner of Real Estate Charters here in Tampa Bay, Florida. I was actually born and raised here uh, in Tampa Bay on Tierra Verde, a little Gulf Run Island. Uh, fished here my whole life from the, the time I could walk. I uh, started getting to the seawall and throwing a line out there and catching whatever I could, bending a rod. And uh, basically the areas that we fish today are kind of the areas that I grew up fishing. I started with a John boat, worked my way up to a bigger boat. But they're, uh, they're pretty much areas that I've fished for 35 plus years and uh, seen a lot of differences, a lot of changes. Also with these hurricanes, there's some new passes that come through. So we were fishing today, uh, an area that even last July was just a, a mangrove shoreline. We got in there and since last August, I've seen it change. There was a, a tiny pass that blew in there. And that water is getting deeper with every full moon tide that we get. So kind of kind of neat, we have to adjust. And I'm not sure that's a Tampa Bay thing. That's probably anywhere in the state of the Florida or, or the world, really. Uh, we start fishing around and you have to adapt. That's one of the things I like about being on the water so much and guiding is, is finding where the fish are, what they're gonna eat one day, uh, getting them figured out. But that's not long term, it's more, more a short term thing. You're gonna figure those fish out for a while and keep adapting to them. Keep changing with it, whether that's new baits, new techniques, different times of day, things like that. It keeps it fresh, uh, keeps me excited to wake up every morning and go out there and fish. Uh, whether the fishing's good or bad, it's a challenge every day. We went out fishing today, just wanting to bend a rod and do some things. We got on some decent snook and we saw a ton of really nice snook, but you know, the snook is snook and they were acting like snook today. The big ones weren't cooperating, but there's always a plan B in my back pocket, uh, something different. We decided to switch it up, target shallow water grouper. By shallow water, uh, we're talking four feet of water. I mean, we pulled up to a spot, and put the power poles down, and started launching white bait out there, just free line white bait, um, as if we were, you know, snook or red fishing. And uh, we caught about two dozen a gag grouper right there in four feet of water. We got a little technical and uh, used some lighter gear throughout there, and those fish cooperated. They, they certainly eat on that rock pile that we were on. It's kind of cool, it switches it up. It's a little bit different. You know, you can go out in the flats every day, but this is basically a flat that we were fishing and uh, we got these grouper dialed in and they, they cooperated and they were eating almost every bait we were throwing at them. And this, this time of year we're in mid-June and uh, basically April, May and June in Tampa Bay. It's a, a great tarpon fishery. It's, it's something that's uh, seeing those fish. I wish we had them year round. This is the time of year I, I like to always keep some tarpon gear ready. Uh, you never know when or where they're going to pop up. We know that they are here in this area. Uh, Today is a good example. We didn't actually go out targeting tarpon. We were snook fishing and before we know it I think the three of us on the boat look behind us and bam, there you go, there was a tarpon rolling, which is cool enough to see 10 feet behind the boat. And the more we look back there, that, that one fish turned into four and next thing you know, there's a school of 20 fish right behind the boat. It's just something you always have to be prepared for. We lucked out today, super clear incoming water, just, just good clean water. And we were able to chase those fish down, throw on them a bunch of times, had real good bait presentations. Just one of those super cool deals to throw at a fish that's older than a dinosaur, you know, 150 pound fish right next to the boat. That's gonna get your heart going if it's your first time I've seen it or your thousandth time seeing it. That's just a really cool fishery that we have here. It's just a special added species to the list in Tampa Bay. Today in the summertime, or I guess Florida in general, we can trust our weather apps as much as we can. And you know, the meteorologists have a, an idea on it, but it's gonna be 60% rain all summer long. It's uh, try and tell clients, don't let that scare you off the water. We're gonna get our four or five o'clock rain shower. Today we experienced a nine o'clock rain shower and it just seemed like it was right over our head. And we kind of stuck it out, had a couple rain drops on us but if anything I think that cloud cover kind of turned those fish on that little change of barometer when that storm came through that's that's exactly what we needed and it seemed like as soon as that storm cleared this fish started chewing and it's just part of the game here it's uh, you're not going to get a zero percent rain chance day in the summertime in Florida you just got to be safe and dodge the lightning and the severe storms but if you're willing to deal with a few raindrops out here you're going to catch some fish I uh, never, never actually as a kid thought I was going to be a fishing guide. Uh, I knew I wanted to fish the rest of my life. I didn't know if that was really a career path. Uh, I went to college at UCF, studied international business. You yeah, the furthest thing away from being an old salt fishing guide. And here I am loving my job every day. It's, uh, it's kind of neat. When I first started guiding, I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to take somebody out and catch small trout or catfish or pinfish. Uh, I thought that was going to be the worst part of my day and part of the job. And to be honest, it's fun seeing somebody from out of town experience our fishery get to show them what I was born and raised doing. Um, it's kind of neat too. It's, it brings me back to my roots. I'm seeing a kid catch a 14 inch trout and see the smile on his face. Makes it enjoyable, makes the day for me and, and that kid just won't stop smiling. I realized pretty quickly, you know, within six months of guiding, we don't have to run it as a tournament. We don't have to go get a 40 inch snook every day. Um, it's, it's more about the scenery, the area that we have, the awesome fishery, but just the awesome scenery as, as far as going from spot A to spot B. You know, we're, we're passing dolphins and pellets 
pelicans and manatees, you know, a lot of the wildlife. We saw a bunch of it today, different things that changes every day. And I was taking that for granted before I guided. But now when I see the kids or adults, I'm seeing them get out there and really uh, respect and enjoy the wildlife that we have here, more so than just a, a big fish, a big snook or a big redfish. Uh, I think I got a little bit too dialed in before I guided that if I didn't get a big, you know, world-class snook, it was, it was a mediocre day. Now it's kind of, you get out there, you're on the water and you realize how good of a fishery this is and how cool of a place we live in. It makes it really enjoyable to wake up every day and it's hard calling it work, but uh, to wake up every day and go to work is just a, a real joy. It's uh, something that, again, I never thought I would be doing and uh, now there's nothing else I could see myself doing.